Hi, I'm Sean Rice from the International Tour of the Adams Family, and welcome back to Gaming Out of Suitcases. Now this week we're looking at a game that is very near and dear to my heart. It's not only a very fun and hilarious game, but it's also a favorite of the Adams Family. In fact, I think it might be Fester's favorite game. This week we're looking at Gloom, developed by Keith Baker for Atlas Games. Now I've actually chatted with Keith via the magic of social media, and he told me that he developed Gloom with the Adams Family in mind. Intrigued? So let me tell you a little bit about it then. Gloom, the game of inauspicious incidents and grave consequences. is part card game and part storytelling game. The world of gloom is a sad and gloomy place where the tea is always cold, the sky is always gray, and disease, debt, and packs of rabid flesh-eating mice are around every corner. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. In gloom, you control a family of eccentric misfits and misanthropes who feel that the more they suffer in life, the better their afterlife will be. The base game, because yes, there are expansions, starts you with four family abodes. Castle Slogar, where Professor Helena Slogar has used unorthodox science to preserve the life of her daughter Melissa and her husband, Lord Slogar. Currently, she's building a groom for Melissa with the help of her grave-digging sidekick, Elias E. Gore. Hemlock Hall is home to Lord Wellington Smythe, whose wife died giving birth to their adorable twins, who are possessed by evil. He dotes on them, not realizing that the nanny is preparing them for a dark destiny. His jazz-loving, gin-drinking older daughter, Lola, also lives with them, and the family butler Butterfield. Blackwater Watch houses the old dam and her henchman, I mean handyman, Willem Stark. Angel is her favorite niece, while cousin Mordecai has recently been taken in by the family. Finally, there's Balthazar, their meddling mutt, who keeps digging up things that are better left buried. Dark's Den of Deformity is the local yet unsuccessful freak show run by Darius Dark. Darius desperately wants to be a ringmaster, but doesn't have the knack for picking axe. His unremarkable bearded man, painfully modest illustrated lady, minute but mediocre opera singer, and creepy clown are truly fatal attractions. Now besides the characters, there are three different types of cards. Modifiers, events, and untimely deaths. The design of these cards is one of the things that makes this game really cool. The modifier cards are see-through. You play them directly from your hand onto one of your family members or your opponent's family members giving them self-worth points. Each modifier card has up to three spaces of pathos points. When all the visible pathos points, both positive and negative, are added together, you find your character's self-worth. The lower the self-worth, the better. Some modifiers also have story icons. Now, by themselves, these guys don't do anything. But other cards may trigger certain special effects if certain story icons are visible on the character. Some modifiers also come with special effects. The special effects are only applicable to the person who owns the character they're played on not necessarily the person who plays the card. Now the really fun part about the modifier cards is the storytelling aspect. Devising a tale of how Lord Wellington Smythe was chased by chipmunks and eventually that led to him drinking himself to death. By the end of the game, you're going to have some really, really interesting, twisted tales about what happened to your family. The next type of card are event cards. Now, these are one-time use cards that you play directly from your hand into a discard pile, and they'll trigger a special effect, or they might cancel a special effect that someone else is trying to trigger on you. Finally, there are untimely death cards. Now, these turn your worthless living characters into very valuable dead characters. But it's important to note that you can only play an untimely death card on your first action of your turn, uh, that means that you can't make someone really, really horrible and then kill them in the same turn. And they can only be played on a character who has a negative self-worth. However, the fun part is you can play it on one of your characters or on one of your opponent's characters. When a character meets their untimely death, turn that character's card over to the rest in peace side. They can no longer be modified during the game. Once an entire family meets their doom, the game ends. Players then count up all the self-worth of all their dead characters. Remember, living characters do not count. To find your final score, the family with the lowest self-worth wins! As you can see, the game is a lot of fun and very creative. And once you start adding some of the expansions in, they not only add other families, which means you can have more than four players, they add uh, special things like different places your families can go, um, different uh, people who can be attached to your family, certain stories that your families can try to achieve. There's even a Cthulhu version that lets you spin tales of Lovecraftian mythos. And of course it's perfect for travel because it's only one deck. I highly recommend picking up a copy and casting some gloom into your next game night. If you'd like to see more in depth about how the game works, come on by Wednesday when we'll do a full playthrough with some of my castmates. But until then, stay gloomy and keep gaming!